Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shay. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Glenn. Oh, I gotta say it. <laughs> that was melodic. Recording. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. I'm with Bed Brat with her mm-hmm. weave mm-hmm. and her bird nails. Do you have bird nails? Birdish. Birdish nails. <laughs> and Chell's pinky with her long she's a, oh no, she's a track hair star. and her euphoria nails. Why you come here? Oh, I didn't star. say that because you have like a track jacket. <laughs> oh. No, not that other thing. That would have been so <laughs> fucked up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, you know, like a running jacket, like a like a uh, running jacket type thing. Okay. Why three? What is a running jacket? I don't know. I always think of it having that it's, type it's of material. Track material. Like sh- yeah, the sh- 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 All right, I don't have time for this. Um, <laughs> don't you ever call me a runner again? <laughs> <I'm> never. <laughs> gonna jump into oh, the on runner reply. Oh my days! Um, I have nothing to leave on red. Life is good. Um. And I'm replying to my Valentine's Day. Oh, my God. It was so amazing. Literally went to a this karaoke spot in Mexico City with, like, all these old couples. And we just, like, sat there and, like, sang ballads all night with, like, the most beautiful couples. They were, like, dancing and singing to each other and dedicating songs to one another. And then, like, coming over to us and talking to us about love and, like, the hardships of love and the importance of love. And it was, like, so fucking beautiful. We all, like, were buying flowers for each other and, like, giving the old ladies flowers. And, like, it was so fucking cute. And then on the way home, we get in our Uber we were all pretty fucked up. So we were kind of being chatty with the Uber driver and we're like, oh, like, where's your Valentine? And he's like, oh, he's working. And like, it's at least my experience hasn't been super common for me to like see. Well, yes, there's like a thriving gay gay community there, but it was one of those things where I was like, oh, like taking him back. And he like actually from there. Yeah. Well, no, like they're gay people from there, but like he was very like, straight presenting like giving Mm. off big mask energy Mm -hmm. and not to make assumptions on like what it looks like to be gay or anything like that but I was kind of like oh no vo like you got a man and he shared with us like kind of their history of like kind of battling that his now partner previously was super machismo super homophobic and our friends with us were like yeah like we've also experienced that but just hearing how they kind of like chose love instead of like living in that kind of like suffering and they've been together for 10 years and he was just like saying the most poetic shit I've ever heard in my life basically like you have to choose love and like love challenges you every day but like you care so much that you like you fight for it and like it's a fucking uber driver at the end of the valentine's day evening like telling us all this and he's like usually I don't open up about this like a lot of people don't know my story like even their families like think they just live together and I was like wow this is so beautiful it was so inspiring and it was such a great evening okay that's so sweet I love it I was also going to reply to my valentine's day oh Um, I know oh I had the best time ever it was just so beautiful I was with um one of my best friends and I decided to be each other's valentine's and it's kind of funny because recently we've been texting each other a lot and just being like, bitch, like, am I in love with you? Weirdly, Ah! like as a friend, like we want to spend all this time together. We literally just like adore each other and make each other so happy when we're around each other. It's just like a beautiful friendship. Like we're obsessed with each other. Basically I had taken a, um, a workshop with this group called writers group NYC or writers club Mm. NYC the day before. And it was all about um, love letters and they asked us to write, they, we, we did, we read a bunch of examples of poems um, that people had written to like their friends and like non-romantic love. And then we had like a moment to have a free write. And I found myself like writing a poem to him. So then I like oh. wrote him, a, wrote, I wrote his poem on a card. I got him some roses and I went to his house because we had plans to go out to dinner after. And I walk in, this bitch got 
uh, the incense burning and shit and some music playing. And he had this whole gift set out for me on this table, like flowers. He made me this like custom collage that he went and got printed on this like beautiful like paper, wrote me a letter, got me a bottle of wine, jewelry. Damn. He went ham. I need I to know where that jewelry's from, by the way. <laughs> I, w- I know. I was like, are That's you your nigga now, Glenn. I know. He got me a, a cake from the from milk. Like, he went okay. crazy. Yo, what? <laughs> he went wow. in. Uh, I was like, damn, I'm mad embarrassed by my gift. Like, I didn't know he was, like, doing all of this. So then I, like, read <laughs> the poem to him to, like, make it, like, a serenade. And then I took him out to dinner. We went to like uh, we went to Dumbo House, and this girl was doing like a live a live jazz set. So we had like a candlelight dinner, and then we ended up going to um, Laquan Smith's this like girl, after Aria? party. Yeah, sorry, I should just shout her out. Aria <laughs> was doing um, Aria Nadej was doing a live set. It was amazing. She was fire, like fire, singing all the classic songs, and she had a live band. That dude actually, that you know Chelsea, that's like the drummer. Oh, he was there. He was in the band. It was fire. I can't remember his name, but he's like really talented. Yeah, um, I'll look it up. Yeah. Uh, and then we went to a Laquan Smith Fashion Week after party that was real interesting. Saucy Santana was the host. So you already know what it was giving. Material girl. <laughs> exactly. I love him. <laughs> yes. He, it was really funny. Um, it was just like just a, a, a dream of a, of a night. And I'm about so to hang cute. out with him again. We're just like loving each other very much right now um what would I leave on reds um nothing really you know again I always say things about my workplace but I have some some potential changes coming up listeners so hopefully by the next time we speak there will be positive energy transitions um Chelsea that's amazing um I am leaving car buying on red. <laughs> the most difficult thing, especially right now, like these motherfuckers want to charge you twenty thousand dollars over a sticker, which is some bullshit. Tw- what? So it's just yeah. Yes. Wait, no, I don't know what that means. Over sticker, the price of the car. Oh, because um, they're more. Yeah, it's not a buyer's market right now. It's not. So it's just very difficult. Um, I may just save fuck it and be an Uber gal and be like Uber platinum status or some shit. Um, Are you trying to buy a while. brand new car? Yes. Why don't you just get a used car? It doesn't even make sense now. Used cars are overpriced too. So you're paying a new car price for a used automobile. Um. Anyway, so it's just all bad hmm. in terms of car buying. Um, you could get you a cute little Honda, little, little Honda Civic. Yes, I could. Um, and anyways, I'm replying to, um, <laughs> I'm replying to, I guess we had a really good day yesterday. We, um, we went to Malibu. We looked at apartments. Oh. Apartment hunting is so fun because what you get from New York, you get way more out here. Mm-hmm. Um, and Wait, were you looking in Malibu? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. No, we, um, the last place we looked at was Santa Monica. So we just like kept going west mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and ended up in Malibu. We had some like great food. It's just like, oh, I love it. It's like, oh, it's the weather, the weather. And we do have a, a family car that I'm afraid to drive. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just great. And also, since you guys both shout out your Valentine's Day, I'm going to shout out mine too. Cute. We had a very fun dinner. We wrote each other our cards, which we always do. Um, and we watched the Clippers and we went to the crypto. I, I forgot who was playing, but that was my Oh my yeah. God, not <laughs> being called a crypto center. Isn't yeah, the what... crypt, it's like the crypto arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So wild. <laughs> Where do we live? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That sounds really nice though. Yeah. yeah, I this year again, like cemented for me. I'm such a fan of Valentine's Day. Like I just think <laughs> it's an amazing holiday. I love it. It's the best. It's so cute. But, but you know what I like more than Valentine's Day? I like like the random mm-hmm. random days romance. when it's like, yeah, the random romance. I actually prefer that over 
mm. it being done on Valentine's Day. But I do like just like the collective, everybody's like focusing love, on love. love, love. Like you could feel it. There's, it's just yeah. like everywhere. It's like so sweet. But you also feel the sourness. I feel like those people got to get that. People. Don't be doing that. It, it, right. Do a friend thing. Valentine's Day however you want. Like That's I didn't true. see as much Beautiful. sourness this year. I saw like Ooh, funny, funny stuff, but like just like people like being mm-hmm. shady, but not like. I saw some sourness. I know some people got into fights over this holiday. Mm. So it can, it can come prayers, with a lot of pressure. Thoughts and prayers. Yes. Damn. Prayers wait. Prayers. I just had a whole <laughs> realization that me and my ex first got into it when we were first started dating. Over some oh, yeah. you know, gifts that he didn't he didn't give me nothing. And then at the our very last fight was because he didn't like the gift that I got him for Valentine's Day. Are you dead ass? That is so full <laughs> circle. And I just realized it. Wow, and you gotta write a piece on anywhere. it. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep, that's a piece. That's a piece. And then my Valentine ended up being my gay best friend the whole exactly. time. Whole time. I'm dead. Perfect Valentine. Um, we have a hot landling girl and I can only me one thing small anecdote I think I talked on the last episode about how like the Haitian dude I was talking to I like I he messaged me like one time and I didn't write back it's been about two weeks I realized that I probably don't want to speak to him but you know Tinks who's been on our show she says that uh ghosting is little dick energy and I have been talking to this man pretty frequently. And I was like, you know what? It's not cute for me to just like not reply. So That's I just great. wrote to him and was like, hey, so sorry. I've been like really swamped at work. My bad. I didn't mean to like disappear. And he's like, hmm, sorry, who is this? And I was like, uh, uh, oh, and I was like, it's Glenn from Hinge. And like, I've seen him out and about or whatever. He doesn't reply at all wasn't he fucking with you i'm assuming because you haven't answered so he's like uh, um, who is this not not knowing who you are oh i don't, I don't think so i don't think that was what it was because maybe maybe i don't know but he never replied Do you not have a text thread i have a text thread so i but think he that he deleted, deleted the text thread like a fucking fiend um oh i'm taking it said, more as what i'm saying he well, said, how did he respond who is that? this exactly my apologies i said lol in all caps glenn from hinge and then he never replied and then i was like whatever um and then i was with one of my friends over the weekend and i was telling him like look at this shit that this man did he just acted mad salty or whatever and i'm like i'll show you his instagram and i pull it up and then i'm like you know what let me just unfollow him now if you want to act all crazy and i unfollow him and i see that he already unfollowed me <laughs> Previously, when and I know this man was. Does that make you want it liking, more? Oh, no, no, no. But so he okay, was like, "Oh, I'm like, you didn't even want him." Posting my pictures in his stories, like weirdly, old pictures was he was putting them in his stories, like things where I like, like slideshow stuff or like random stuff. I don't know. It didn't make any sense. Um, like audio clips and stuff. So I know this man was following me. Um, I just find it just funny. I just find it all funny. Like did he just be like, oh. She's not answering me. Where's I'm gonna go? take this. I'm gonna unfollow her. Maybe he's that's how you protect your energy. So yeah. yeah. I'd probably unfollow like you this. if you ain't messaged me back for two weeks or whatever yeah. the how long the fuck you don't message people back. I'd be like, oh, she's not interested. Right. I don't need her in my right. orbit. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair. Good for him. Listen, I'm glad I, I love I unfollowing wrote people. Me too. I was like, wait, <laughs> I don't need to follow you anyway. <laughs> I don't gotta see your shit no more. Oh Didn't my like seeing it anyways. <laughs> Zoo, we have a black girl doing. I mean, I know we do, so just tell them who it is. Please <laughs> so our black girl doing shit this week is Miss Desiree Rogers. So Desiree has over 25 years of experience building brands and varies in blah, 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 blah. sorry. Our Black girl doing shit this week is Miss Desiree Rogers. Desiree has over 25 years of experience building brands in a variety of industries. Her leadership focuses on identifying opportunities, building teams, driving results. She's currently the CEO and co-owner of Black Opal, and she and her business par- partner, Cheryl Mayberry McKissick, recently launched the iconic prestige beauty brand Fashion Fair Cosmetics in Sephora. So it's a relaunch. This is an iconic brand, and in this episode, 
We're going to talk a lot about it. Um, from 2010 to 2016, she was the CEO of Johnson Publishing Company, and she and her team transformed the Ebony and Jet brands through editorial and digital redesigns. And she was formerly the first social secretary for President Obama, where she spearheaded the execution of the People's House um, into reality. And she built national partnerships with corporations, the entertainment industry, fashion designers, and the arts to give a fresh view of how the White House represented American culture, which is very interesting. Um, let's get into this episode, y'all. So we are so excited to have Ms. Desiree Rogers here in the group chat with us. Welcome, welcome. So happy to be here. Can't yes. wait to chat. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're recording this episode right now during Black History Month. It'll come out. Actually, it'll still be Black History Month when this comes out. Um, yep. But I, for the first time this year, I've been hearing people say Black Futures Month at the same time, right? So I think it's really um, appropriate for us to talk about this amazing legacy brand, Fashion Fair, its history and the future that's ahead of it. So we're so excited to talk about this legacy brand. I mean, the girls and I often in our group chat talk about how we grew up seeing our moms and our aunties using fashion fair. It's like so iconic. And in preparing for this um, episode, I was doing some reading and I saw that the genesis of the brand really started with the Ebony Fashion Fair, which was a traveling runway show hosted by Ebony Magazine. Can you share more with us about what the fashion fair was and how it sort sure. of laid the foundation for fashion fair, the brand? So Fashion Fair was probably the Fashion Fair show was one of the, you know, first kind of fashion shows with music and beautiful models that strolled down the runway. And so Mrs. Johnson felt very strongly that glamour and fashion and blackness all needed to be seen across the country. And so she would go to Europe and buy the clothing because they wouldn't loan it to her. She actually bought the clothing from Yves Saint Laurent, from Pierre Cardin, from all of these great designers, Stephen Burroughs, who was a fabulous um, a black designer. She would buy them and then she would do this traveling show and she would go to 50 cities around America. What she noticed, because all of her models were diverse, they were mixing their makeup. And I actually talked to one of them and I said, what were you guys mixing? And she said, literally mixing eyebrow pencil with foundation, to try to get it darker. You know, I just saw Beverly uh, Johnson at the Sergio Hudson show, and she was one of the first faces of Fashion Fair. And she walked that show um, just on Sunday. And But can you imagine that you're mixing up, not mixing to get your perfect shade, literally mixing something up that's a beige to get it to, you know, dark brown. Because and it crushing just up didn't your, exist. No, it didn't exist. And crushing up your brow pencil. So she noticed that and she said, wow. She went to all of the big companies and said, there's really a need for darker complexions of foundations. None of them, you know, took, none of them said, yeah, that's a great idea. So she did it herself. Typical Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> um, and so shade range was like a big part of the brand from the very beginning, correct? Well, not just shade range, mm -hmm. the importance of really thinking at its core about black skin. And so we today, everyone is talking about shade range, which is great. I'm happy for that, but it's more than, than, just, than just that. If you have a darker complexion, which all of us sitting around the table do, you know we have some particular problems. We have you know, dark spots at some time. If we pick at something, we want to fade. We can, so we have hyperpigmentation. We may have oiliness. We may have a reaction to fragrance. We have sensitive skin, many of us. And so she came from a place of, I'm going to make certain that I'm creating cosmetics that are geared and that are specially formulated for darker skin tones. So not just, you know, all the treatments as well as all the colors. And most importantly, which is one of the key things is all of the undertones. And as you know, a brown is not a brown. A brown girl is just not a brown girl. She's got an undertone. It could be neutral. It could be cool or it could be so the ounces are very, very important as well. Yeah. I'm so yeah. like drawn to that era in time. My mom um, was previously the editor-in-chief at Essence when I was a kid. And I just was always like, 
just drawn to like all the glamour and luxury of that time and fashion was at its height for for black folks especially like the height mm-hmm. of black publications do you have any idea just like maybe what was happening in society um for black people at the time that sort of set the stage for the arrival of fashion fair that really like made it so people embraced it was it like the rise of a well, middle class you know, I was a kid I was I'm not that old <laughs> but I was a kid, but I can just tell you that um, because there was, you know, such a, um, well, how do I, I put it, Su- such a, a, a stigma in regards to expressing your naturalness. And the 70s really allowed people to say, I'm not straightening my hair anymore. I am going to wear an Afro. I am going to wear bell bottoms and stripes and flowers and prints. If you look at the the new um, documentary that um, uh, is done on soul music and done on you know the, this uh, concert that was had in, in, at the same time that they did uh, Woodstock, you can see that people switched over. You had the kind of that Temptations look and the Supremes, where everyone was dressed in a ball gown and dressed in a suit. And then Sly and the Family Stone kind of threw that out the window and said, no, we're going to be hippies. We're not wearing a suit. We're going to throw on leather vests. We're going to throw on leather coats. We're going to throw feathers on top of it. And we're just going to mix it up. And so I think that it took a while. It was like an evolution from what I would call proper, proper white society. And then we kind of made it like proper black society with our tuxedos and our ruffles and our bow ties and our, you know, Diana Ross attire and then into the Sly and the Family Stone and then just crazy. (laughs) And so, and I think that, as you know, still today, many people follow what black Americans create, you know? And so we are very creative people. We are very expressive people and people copy us all the time. You know, so it's kind of a shame that we did not have, you know, our products for us, for our skin tones and skin types so early on. And it took her to do it, you know, in the 70s. I mean, and many, many actors talk about their struggle on camera to not have the makeup they needed to look like themselves on film. Yeah, and it's interesting that we're talking about something of the past, but many actors and models talk about this now, too. Uh, Mm -hmm. makeup not having the proper tone, hairstylists not knowing how to handle black hair. Um, So I think we've all struggled with that, right? You're doing something for work or production or something and you're like, well, who's doing my makeup? Who's doing my hair? Have they done black hair? Have they done darker skin tones? And you have that fear that somehow you're not going to look the way you want to look and that your skin is not going to be well represented. And you know, I think that it is, it still is, it still is out there. I mean, there are many times that people don't have all the shades and, or they think like, I've got a couple of brown shades that's going to work. Well, just like you have all those shades for lighter complexions, we need our full range of shades. And so we are here to supply those. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) We are, we, we have, we are here to supply those and make certain that that is, is uh, taken care of. In fact, we're reaching out to film and to many of the makeup artists that we know and their friends to introduce them to the new brand and to make certain that they can experiment and have this in their kits. Absolutely. I think what we're also kind of getting at is this idea that beauty is a lot deeper than skin deep, right? It's about how you present yourself to the world, but it also impacts how you feel inside. And I was reading this article that Robin Gavon wrote for the Washington Post a few years back, and she wrote that Fashion Fair wasn't just promoting beauty and glamour, but also self-esteem and confidence. And she went on to say that beauty products are not essentials, but in those little bottles and jars are fragments of a social contract, elixirs of reassurance, drops of pure pleasure. I wonder what your response is to this and just thinking about the importance of beauty for Black women. Yeah, I mean, people, you know, and I was I was a person that said, oh, this is not going to be a business I'm in. It's frivolous, et cetera, et cetera, until I got to Johnson Publishing and really spent a lot of time at the time behind the counter for Fashion Fair across the country. And I would have conversations with women everywhere because I'd see them come up to the counter. I'm working, but I'm saying, how are you? What's going on? And they would talk to me. 
And they would talk about the importance of matching their shade. Sometimes I would convince them, I don't know if that's quite your shade. Should we try something else? And we do a half and half because sometimes I felt that women were hiding their complexions, you know, not really wanting to see their natural glow, you know, a freckle here. A freckle. That's a beautiful thing, you know, or maybe had a lipstick that wasn't quite as modern as it should be. You know, we get in these ruts and we think like we can only look a certain way. And so sometimes it's about taking chances with color. It's about like, today I feel like this, so why shouldn't I wear blue? Or why shouldn't I wear purple? Or maybe, you know, I think lipstick is a little bit different. We kind of have our categories, but you know, there's so many things you can do with makeup that really make you feel good about yourself. And for me, when I look in the mirror, I take a second or third look and I say, girl, you look good today. A girl, you better try to work that out a little better than that. <laughs> so I want to like me every day before I, you know, go out, even if I'm, I, you know, it, it's a, it's a upper. Think about it. Who doesn't want to look good to themselves? You know, it's kind of a, like a, it gives you an extra pep. It gives you, you know, the confidence you need to do whatever it is you're dealing with. Because I, you know, it's particularly today, so many of us are boxed in. We're not going the places that we've usually gone. We're not seeing the people that we usually see. We don't get that, you know, you're calling it an elixir. We don't get that elixir of personal contact. And so we have to kind of make our own fun in a way. And so I think now more than ever, skincare makeup becomes kind of a self-love and an achievement and a kind of an easy way for you to kind of give yourself a pat on the back because you made it through another day of COVID. <laughs> I mean, it's tough out here right now. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. not just COVID, but everything that's happened with, you know, America, race relations, crime, you name it, you know, all the big cities and what's happening. It's real, it's hard. There's not one day that we don't wake up that there's going to be some surprise that you go, wow, that happened. It weighs heavy, totally. Yeah. You have these little so things that make you feel we good need and beautiful. <laughs> we need something. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, in that same article, Robin Gavan also said that um, when Fashion Fair first came out, it served as a dynamic case study in the potential of Black entrepreneurs and Black consumers. Um, and I know that um, you mentioned offline that the founders of the brands, the Johnsons, I'm, I'm a... Uh, alum of the illustrious John H. Johnson School of Communications. Um, wow. So I know all the, all that they've done from Ebony to Jet. I don't know if you just want to share a little bit about just the impact of fashion fair so, and their like Sure. Honesty. I mean, I think sometimes we don't realize, I mean, especially if we weren't there during the time and I certainly, you know, wasn't there the whole time, but I did meet them and knew them. And so just the, the you know, the, the contribution that the Johnsons made at a time that where it was so needed and just so difficult. I mean, can you imagine, I'm gonna create a magazine that has black people on the cover. Today we think like big deal, black people are on every cover. Well, they weren't, <laughs> that's the point and couldn't get on. And you say, well, I, I just don't understand that. I mean, I think today racism is so much subtle, more subtle, but it's still there and we know it. And we, you know, we are trying at our best to like kind of, you know, do what we can to push our agenda forward. But at that time, I mean, he would say, he would say you know, there was nothing like it. And so you've got all these movie stars, you have all these people that are doing all these wonderful things. He said, I want to highlight those people. And he also said, you know, there are bad things going on like Emmett Till. I'm going to highlight that as well. And I'm going to make certain that, you know, there was no internet. So I'm going to make certain that people in all the cities get the information. They're able to read it for themselves and judge and decide how they want to participate, how they want to react, what they want to think about. And so it was very informative. It was also very liberating, as you could imagine, very um, prideful. You know, sometimes we forget how important pride is, you know, how important it is to really have pride and what we're all accomplishing. Because I think the world is moving so fast, data is moving so fast that we're not taking that moment, that opportunity 
as we're scrolling through things and reading them quick, that opportunity to say, wow, what did I just read? Or what did I just write? Or what did I personally just accomplish? You know, how good was I in that interview? Versus just running to the next thing. Oh, I got to do this. I got, you know. And so I think that it's important that we slow down a little bit. And COVID has created that atmosphere. Slow down a little bit and really think about the work that we're in and the work that we're doing and the voices that we are providing. And he paved the way, not just in media, but also in many of the, the scholarships and the contributions that they participated in over $55 million you know, in this country. Uh, and um, just the examples that they set that a black man and woman could do what they did. And so I think all of us, you know, I happen to be at the helm today, but all of us owe them the legacy of making certain that these iconic brands stay alive and continue to represent and evolve as the world evolves. In fact, we just launched the Fashion Fair Spellman Scholarship. And so we're gonna make certain that we continue in that realm to educate um, young women, um, as, you know, and associate them with Fashion Fair. So that's one small thing, but we have to keep it going. I mean, we have to continue to generate wealth in our community mm -hmm. and, um, you know, be able to have that wealth and, you know, use it in our community to move ahead because we got a lot of work to do. We all know it. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, we want everyone to support these brands, these black owned brands, but I will say as a black person, I feel like an extra sense of pride when I'm wearing like fashion fair or holding a Telfar bag or wearing a Christopher Rogers dress. And I get a compliment and I'm like, yeah, this was created by someone that looks like me and had me in mind. So I just wanted to point that out to um, the power of like buying black as totally. a black person, especially. Yeah, and, and, and introducing it to others. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, we have lipsticks. Everyone can wear our lipsticks. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's that sometimes they are, you know, they, they are lipsticks that can go on every color lip, you know, but it'd be great, you know, if all of America embraced it. Right. Absolutely. You know, totally. why not? I mean, we're buying white all the time. <laughs> exactly. I was just How thinking that. How many times that. are we buying white? I can't even count. Right. Like a lot of these brands, these black owned brands are made out of necessity, right? Like the whole story you just told us about fashion fair. And then right. once they're started to, once I think make a brand started to realize like, oh, if we don't actually carry shades that like people with darker complexions can wear, then we're like missing an entire market. Then we started shopping mm -hmm. with them. Um, and I feel like right. there's now this sort of return to shopping I black think you're because right. it exists, but also because it makes us proud. Right, and we can't lose that. I think this generation is really bringing back that pride of the 70s. It's, a, it's different, but the same. You know, I was a little kid, but I, I, you know, I was like, oh, this is, something's happening here. You know, everyone's yeah. changing their hair. Everyone, you know, everyone's wearing fringe. Wow, what's going on? <laughs> you know, my mother looks, you know, what's happening? You know, she doesn't look the same anymore. <laughs> You know, no, and totally. so I think, you know, she's got bands around her head like an Indian. And wow, you know, <laughs> like, wow, what's happening, mom? But I think that this this uh, generation is really pushing us forward and is very brave and audacious in their approach. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we've got, you know, this period of time where I am hopeful that it, we won't have all these first. We won't believe this person was the first to do that, the first to do that. And we won't really, I mean, I'm following the money. We won't have this wealth gap. I mean, it, 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 no matter what we think or say, it really is about the money at a certain level. If, the, if you have the money, there are so many things that you can do. You can you know, make certain that every kid in that neighborhood has access to the education they need. You can make certain that they have internet and they have computers. You know, you can do all of this. You can take over your old neighborhood and make certain that everybody has what they need to learn, you know, but you have to have money to do that. And so much of our, our money traditionally has been in, you know, homes and housing and real estate is kind of the, a way that people have accumulated wealth. And we know that, you know, some of those, that real estate value has diminished. And then so many of us are taking care of extended families. 
And so even if we're, we're making a good living, we're still taking care of that immediate family. And we don't have all this wealth to be able to give away and to help our community from a monetary standpoint that our counterparts have in white America. And so we've got to get to a point where, you know, we got a billion dollars. We got a hundred million dollars, you know, not one million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I'm sure these are lots of things you think about being at the helm of this brand. And also, I kind of want to get into your own story because you've had a really interesting trajectory. Um, prior to this, you were, um, you previously been the White House Social Secretary for President Barack Obama's office. And so then how did you make your way into beauty? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is a circuitous route. So that's for sure. I think when I came out of the Obama administration, the one thing that was changed is I thought I am going to work for my community, in my community, something that deals with my community, that that was going to be important to me. And for the rest of my work life, I wanted to be in that space. I didn't know what space it was going to be, but I just felt like I've done my training. I've done my education. I've worked at these very large firms. How can I take that knowledge and create, be involved with, participate in something that gives back to my community in some way. And so that's when I went to work for Johnson Publishing. And of course they owned Ebony and Jet and also Fashion Fair. And so I just saw the impact, we talked about it here a little bit earlier, the whole impact of cosmetics, not having to worry about getting your foundation or your powder, you know, being able to look the way you want to look. You know, it just, it just changed me. And I thought, wow, if I can incorporate a business along with empowering women and being in a space where I could really talk to more women and, and, and be vulnerable and say, look, this is how I did it. Maybe I could impact, you know, that next generation or even people that, you know, are my age or young girl, whatever, and say, ladies, we can all do this. We can do this. We can make this happen that I wanted to really figure out and be a part of that. So when I came out of Johnson, I knew that I wanted to be in the ethnic beauty space. I just didn't know how. So I was like, I'm somehow I'm going to figure this out. I'm a little scrappy that way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, I, I don't know exactly what, but I, I'm going to figure something out. My daughter would say, I cannot believe you are unemployed. What are you going to do with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you like to stay busy. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do, mom? I said, because I was like, you got to be employed now. So she was back at me. <laughs> do you know what your sun sign is, Desiree? We always ask our guests this. <laughs> My, you your mean zodiac like, sign? Of course. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what were you thinking? She was on your team, Chelsea? Yeah. I yeah. Thought maybe Capricorn. <laughs> no, Gemini. I know lots of Capricorns. Come on, so lots old boyfriends, lots of Capricorns. <laughs> uh, but I am a Gemini, a June baby. Yeah, I love that. I, uh, two people in one. You get two for two for one. <laughs> yeah, keep us on well, our toes. So, Glenn mentioned at the top of our conversation that we were talking about Black history, but also like the future of, of the Black community. Um, but I will say when I hear fashion fair, um, I think about like my mom and when do you think things change for fashion fair? Like, like when did it slow down and why slash how are we bringing it back? So I am hopeful that you'll not only think um, of your mom, but you'll think about yourself and your purchasing power and the ability that you have to embrace a brand that was so supportive of us, of us when no one else was. And so how do we, you know, how do we think about the future? Certainly we want to build on what the past is and what the history is and make certain that we all understand that lesson of that, of that history uh, and understand like this is one of the first and one, not only just a first, but high quality prestige, department stores. You couldn't go into department stores and I know everyone's department store. That's where you went to shop. People mm -hmm. dressed to shop at a certain point in time. And during my mother's time, they dressed to go into the department store and to see someone that looked like you behind the counter 
I think you still want that today in many respects. When you go into a Sephora, you'd like to see someone that you know they're going to be able to color match you. And they understand what you're, they're, you're saying that I'm a little darker on, the, on my forehead and maybe a little lighter around you know, my mouth are a little darker around my, that you, they understand that they're not going, what, what, what do you mean? You know, you, are, are we talking dark circles? Well, I might have, to, but I'm not talking about dark. I'm talking about, you know, I just have different colorations on my face and how do we, we think about that. And so as we think about the future, we think let's build on that history. You know, how do we think about fashion fair today, the way Mrs. Johnson thought about it in the seventies? All right, that's what I'm thinking every day. All right, if she were here today, what would we be doing? We'd certainly be doing our fashion shows, which we did Sergio Hudson on, on, on Sunday. We would certainly want to be in a prestigious uh, environment to buy the product, right? We would certainly want the product to be glamorous and beautiful. And when we took it out of our bags, we weren't like, we were like, did you did you did you see me take yes. this lipstick out of Why my bag? Put this lipstick on. Almost like a piece of jewelry. Yes. You know, so we want all that glamour and we want it to show up. If I put the lipstick on and I have a darker lip, I want my red to be my red. I don't want to be like, oh, it looks kind of red, you know. And so as we think about that, what does that mean? That means we have a dermatolo black dermatologist working with us on all the products. We have a black product development team working with us on the products. We have Sam Fine, who is a brilliant makeup artist working with us on the products and showing us how to use those products on black skin, how to highlight black skin, you know? And so the team is all dedicated to really being the best in class in terms of makeup and how it's used on darker complexions. And so the whole line is vegan and very clean. Many times people don't claim that. It's hard to do, particularly in some of the darker formulations. And I won't tell you, we didn't have trouble, but I'm standing at the plant saying, I'm sorry, black brunette has to be vegan and clean mm -hmm. just like the others. Right. We have never made anything, Desiree, this dark with this kind of you know clean formulation. Well, we're gonna do it now, aren't we? Keep going. Oh, interesting. I didn't Keep know that. Keep going. A darker Because no one wants you to know that. <laughs> wow. That's kind you of know, scary. Check, check <laughs> your yeah, ingredients. possible. Check your wow. ingredients. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I feel so like- Many just... times, it's many times companies start from a white base and then darken it. And there are items and ingredients that are put into the formulation base that don't hold up well on darker skin tones. And that's why you see this ashy gray effect on people, almost greenish. You'll mm -hmm. see an orangey effect on a lighter skin black person, look at almost orange color, a little like, you're like, what's that? What's going on there? <laughs> and so- I just know this is a fact because I know as I worked with the manufacturers, I had to wait for ingredients, even though they manufacture many of the lines that we all know that have diversity of color, and we are the only ones ordering those ingredients. Wow, that's, that's super fact. important because I know right now everyone's so interested in like their health and clean beauty. Um, so yeah, definitely wanted to highlight that, that fashion fair is... Uh, seeing that as very important. Totally. Yes. And I think it's really interesting that the brand is like reintroducing itself in this time when there's a lot of um, like black owned beauty brands um, mm -hmm. and brands with like a, a lot of shade range, as we mentioned before, like we're all big fans of Ami Cole. Juvia's Place has great um, foundations. And I know when Fenty Beauty first rolled out like that huge shade range, it was really exciting for people. So what are your thoughts on re-entering this space with all these new brands alive? Um, do you look at it as something really exciting to be in conversation with them, be amongst you know, them? I, I think that it is exciting, you know, and I look forward to, you know, meeting as many of those founders and contributors as, as possible, because I think there's so many things that we can do to, together. There's plenty of room for all of us. This is not a competition. This is not a battle between us. I mean, oftentimes, you know, in our community, you know, we start getting at each other. And that, that, is, that is the kiss of death. 
I mean, that's how they take us down, right? Let's have them fight. Let's mm -hmm. have the gladiators in the ring and have them fight. You know, none of that. You know, let's be supportive. I mean, and we know women have multiple brands in their purse. You know, I have multiple brands in my purse. I just want to be one of those brands in your purse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all. I just want to be one of the brands in your purse. And so I think there's plenty of room for all of us. I think, you know, everybody is different. Um, and, um, you know, I am very, very happy to see so many of us have an opportunity to do well. I think the more we hold hands and work together, the better off we can be because, you know, there are big retailers out there and there are big, you know, companies out there that we're working with. And so an opportunity to really share together and lessons learned and have conversation is a really good thing as opposed to a competitive thing. There might be some opportunities for, like I said, for us to do some, some things together, learn from one another mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, push this whole industry in terms of black uh, founders and, um, you know, owners pushing that, pushing that envelope. Totally. You know, so let's talk about oh. some of the products. Which ones are your favorite? And since this is an audio platform, I'd love if you would describe it so that we can like, since we can't see and feel it. So are the products rich and creamy? You know, what should we look out for? Anything new coming? <clears throat> All of that. Sure. I think there's a couple of products that I really, really, really love. I love the primer. I think it is a protection of the skin. It is more than creamy it's peach tone so you don't have to wipe this like whiteness into your skin so it has this loving kind of peach uh feel to it um not thick i wouldn't call it creamy it just kind of like melts it's like a splash of water on your skin mm. you know but that stays you know just like it kind of like that a mist almost on the skin um, that allows, if you're going to put on makeup, great. If you're not going to put on makeup, that's okay too. You have this great emollient on your skin. And so I really love the texture and how it feels on the skin. And the fact that I don't have to work so hard to push it into my skin, that it's this beautiful, beautiful peach tone. So that is one, definitely one of my favorites that everyone can use. And that's a wonderful uh, product that Dr. Robinson created with us. And then I have to say, you know, I like the sticks. I like the sticks because I don't often apply, apply um, cosmetics over my face. So I may just cover a couple of areas, you know, under eye, you know, maybe a little bit around the mouth and that, and that smooth that in, tap that in and that ready to go with a light powder over it and I'm done. So I'm not necessarily applying foundation all over my skin. And I love the fact that it's a simple little stick that I can throw in a bag. So, you know, I can do easy touch-ups. You know, you go in the bathroom and you're like, wow, what happened? I know it's <laughs> late, but I don't want to look like that. <laughs> I don't know who I'm going home with tonight. Let me try to mix <laughs> it up a bit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean. Not crazy. You don't look like you've been like done, done, done. Just a little done. I like that you can look just a little done and a little polished um, with the stick. And so, and then you, you always have to have a great lipstick. I mean, you have to have, if you have nothing else, you have to have a great lipstick. So I would say if you're not you have to have that primer and the lipstick. The lipsticks are so creamy, so moist. You never have that dry feeling. You never have that sticky feeling. You know, that tap, tap where your lips kind of stick together and it's mm -hmm. full color. So whatever, whatever color you choose, whether it be our colors from the seventies, which we brought back colors like cat fight and chocolate raspberry, and pure plum, uh, ole orange, which is really brave color and it's orange. It's so beautiful. Or our nudes, colors like nuditude, our koi, our ganache, you know, that it, it, it really gives you a full range of beautiful color to put on the lip. And it just wears really well. It just, I, I mean, if you, you know, it just, it's, it's a perfect lipstick. I mean, I'm not saying that because 
it's ours. Mm -hmm. I don't like to wear a lot of lipstick, but I'm addicted. And my favorites are nuditude and lace. Nuditude is a, is, a, is a nude and lace is a little bit more pink, but I love those colors. I just, I mean, I've got many, many tubes of those <laughs> in every purse. Yes. Every purse. You want in every you know, purse. In surprise. I don't want a bad surprise in my purse. <laughs> you know, you look in your old bags, you grab it. You're like, oh, here's my nuditude. <laughs> 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 totally. You know, yeah, yeah totally. you know what I'm saying. You got old tickets in there or whatever, wherever you were or whatever. But um the lipsticks really I encourage you to take a look at them. And I love this the 70s shades are selling really well. That's so exciting. Just and, to be you know, able to have your a mom piece of probably that. knows chocolate. They probably know chocolate raspberry. You say to any woman of a certain age, black, chocolate raspberry. Oh my God. So <laughs> Our customers, you know, that have loved the, the brand for so many years, they're all online saying, please bring back, you know, whatever their favorite Moroccan spice. Are you guys going to do this color and that? Because there was like 80 lipstick colors. Wow. And we only did, we've only done uh, 14. Wow. There was 80 a of lot them. coming down the pipeline. Oh, yes. Well, the next thing is lip gloss. Yay. We love a good next. gloss. Gloss. Ooh. Yay. Lip gloss is next. I know people can't see, but lip gloss is next. So really creamy, really fabulous. We've been working on it for a long time. Again, the same thing. We don't want to disappoint. We've got this history on our shoulders. We can't disappoint. We can't come out with something that's just like, eh, <laughs> eh. I thought my mom said this was great. I thought my aunt said this was amazing. What are they talking about? Have they not seen the other brands I'm using? No, we want you to say they were right. I was wrong. How yes. could I not listen to my aunties and my mother and my grandmother? Of course they knew what they were talking about. Who They're was the ones who always know that I was smarter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's old is new. It's not always new. It's not always better. And improving on something that was so great, I think is the best. Mm. It's, I think it's the absolute best. You know, if you can take something that was so great at a point in time and improve on that and make that um, appeal to today's marketplace. And we did a lot of talking to younger people and older people and trying to bridge that gap, giving the colors that people that love the brand for so many years, but then also listening to younger people who were more concerned with taking care of their skin. What are the ingredients? You know, is this healthy for me? You know, is it vegan? And we kind of mix those two together. Perfect balance. And that's you know, how we came out with the line. I'm really curious about, because you mentioned this earlier, um, that like a big part of the sales for Fashion Fair was like the department store and the glamour of all of that, being able to touch and see mm -hmm. and feel the product. Um, how have you been, approaching it now thinking about like e-commerce and how people can find their shade and like shop online? Mm -hmm. That is a great question. The first thing is, you know, we are at a select about 225 Sephora's. And so we're working hard. We still have more work to do to make certain that everyone is trained and really is experienced in how, how these products work in store. If you happen to go for a shade match in store. So that's one thing. The second thing is we are working to improve and enhance virtual try-on on our website so that you can get a virtual feel and sense of how these, these colors will work on your skin. We have models that are reflective of each, each color. Because a lot of people say, well, I look kind of like her, so what is she wearing? So we have that. We also have a description of what the undertones are of each color. So you'll know it's medium with a neutral undertone, you know, and oh, there's so-and-so. Oh yeah, I look like that, I'm medium. And then we also have another way to look at it. Today I wear this, what would I be matched up with? And then we have mm. a fourth way. I used to wear this in Fashion Fair. So what is my color in the new Fashion Fair line? And to be honest, mm. what we found is we missed a few. And so we're back in the labs right now 
creating a few more shades where consumers have said, hey, I'm sorry, I don't see anything in that line that looks like my old shade. And what is going on, Fashion Fair? How could you forget me? How, how, how? I was so in love and now I've just been cast aside. <laughs> and so we are going back and reworking. We're never, you know, we admit we weren't perfect on this. We're going back and reworking four more shades. That's exciting. You know, but really the best way is really if you can make it to go into the Sephora store. Because then you you see it, you know, you you feel it. You can pick like, I want stick or I want cream to powder. You know, all of Sam says, you've got to set your, your foundation with loose powder. He's like, there's no other way to set foundation. Don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. And we've got, you know, great, great, you know, loose uh, powders for setting. And now there's so many tricks that, you know, back in the day, who knew, you know, I'm like, wow, you're putting that light color on her. And he's like, yes, I am, Miss Rogers. Be quiet. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know, I'm like, wow, look, look, wow. And so we have a couple of videos coming out where he literally takes us through the process with both the cream, the powder, and the stick foundation, and then the loose powder for setting. So it's like the perfect face with the two separate foundations, a lighter skin woman, a darker skin woman by Sam and all of his tips. Oh, I can't you know, wait so for those gives, videos. He gives yeah. up the tips. I'm like, what is that? Desiree? <laughs> I said, I guess that's why I'm not a makeup artist. <laughs> but I will tell you this, both women looked amazing. I'm and the sure. products are very um, dewy and skin-like. So you don't get that dull, that dull look. I mean, I you, it's matte, but not like, unrealistic skin texture that's like yeah, well you're exactly how I like it <laughs> girl he would he would say it's okay <laughs> it's okay Desiree how long did you take to do that mm, yeah. I watched a lot I tried I tried I how tried. long do you take to do your own makeup do you do like a full routine or you're like you said earlier you like a little stick but if you're doing like a fuller face do you still keep it pretty simple girl I'm a five minute <laughs> ten minute max girl absolutely don't look too close you see I'm staying back <laughs> <laughs> no you look great <laughs> yeah. so no I, I like quick if I have to do something more then some a makeup artist has to do it <laughs> I wish I knew more. I, I'm going to, one of the, my goals for this year though, is to really learn how to do like the eye situation. Yeah. You know, the, like this and the, the, you know, this part of the eye, I don't know any of that. The cut crease. It's so fake. I'm this, so fake that. on that. <laughs> a little, you know, <laughs> it's a darker tone here and the highlighter there. Uh, t- terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have one kind of random question before we close out. Are you familiar with this new publication called Black Fashion Fair? Have you seen anything I, about this? I am. I am. I We filmed um, one of our models with Quill Lemons. You know who he is, the photographer? He's I don't think so. Photographer. Yeah, he did the Billie Eilish um, cover okay. um, for one of those is magazines. L, I think. I mean, one of them. Anyway, he filmed some things for us and he mentioned it. And so I want to get in touch with that young man that's, that's doing that because again, we can partner on some things, you know, so I haven't like studied it or whatever, but you know, maybe we could partner on some things together. Yeah. seems like there'd be some cool alignment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Seems like there could be. <laughs> Chelsea, any, any last questions? No, I'm, I'm like trying to get some lipstick. So I will be doing that soon. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. You guys have got to try the products. I mean, they they really, I mean, you're not going to be, you're not going to be disappointed. I promise. I'm not going to, I don't know what you use now. Hopefully it's black owned companies, but I heard some names that weren't, but that's okay. (laughs) But, but you know, I would suggest that there's so many black owned companies out there that you can do your full face face and hair with companies that are black owned and nails with Mm -hmm. black owned uh, companies. And so I think that all of us 
have to be supportive as black women, as women of color. And we have to convince our other girlfriends that might not be women of color to also be supportive. That is how we're gonna grow our businesses and get to a point where we have the kind of investment in our communities and wealth creation among our people that we need. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Well, have a great night. I really appreciate it. Happy shopping. Yes. (laughs) I can't wait. Let me know what shades you wind up with. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Bye. Um, I have a, a short and brief, what would you do? I don't know if you guys have anything else. Okay, let's do it. All right. So dear BGT, I'm an avid listener and appreciative of the space you all create. I'm in a predicament with a friend of mine who can be very harsh in her delivery. And sometimes it truly feels mean. I know why she is the way she is. So I feel like I excuse her behavior, but I don't know how to tell her she has been a bit harsh without her going on the defense. Any advice have you ever dealt with a friend like this? Hmm. Me. I'm not yeah, I'm like, you are the one. You're but I wouldn't say you're harsh. You're just <laughs> no. no, I'm direct. You're not harsh. I know, but, but some can people can't feel take harsh, directness. maybe, but yeah, I sometimes feel like directness harsh feels harsh. Is like uh yeah, I like, wish I had an example. I know. It makes you think of that other that former friend that we sometimes reference on the show who would just say, like, oh, she was mean. rude. She was just rude. <laughs> like and miserable yeah I wonder like what kind of harshness we're talking is she like your man's a bum <laughs> or, she... or like stop yeah like stop crying to me about this guy either break up with him or right. seek therapy right, right, right. with him I wonder what it is um so back to shot and therapy Woo-hoo. my therapist said a lot of times we um create like emotional reasoning and so you may think your friend is going to go on the defense or you may think that you addressing this with her is going to upset her but that's like a narrative that you've created and the only way to know is to actually act on it so I guess if you know that maybe she's more she might be more sensitive or you know why she's the way she is maybe like she grew up with a harsh parent whatever whatever the fuck you think the reasoning is that can't like stop you from saying what you have to say so if you need to deliver it in a nice way to the best of your ability then sure but like you still have to address it like even if I wouldn't say do it in a joking manner actually I feel like that just doesn't help but I think being like hey girl like I feel like lately and maybe have some examples like you know, the way you've said this to me made me feel this way. Also, yes, it's come from an I perspective. So not like you are harsh, you are mean, you are not mm. nice. But like the way you've said this has made me feel like this. And so that person can do with it what they want. Like if I'm your friend, I'm never going to want to say things to you that'll make the, make me hurt you. So maybe it doesn't come off as like, oh, I'm a mean bitch, but it comes off as like, oh, maybe I should rethink the way I say things. And maybe just even in relation to you, like maybe she talks to other friends like this and they don't have qualms with it. But a lot of, you know, friendship is kind of being mindful of the different dynamics you have with people. So. Come on, Shade. Very well said, Shade. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Yo, two sessions in, $30 spent. Okay. Wow. I really got to You, Money you didn't send spent. us her information. Yeah. You did not, you did not send and it to I us. And I did not reach out to her ass yet. Y'all oh, wait. She sent it to us? my therapist. No, I sent it to Chelsea because she texted me and asked me for the information. <laughs> you still over here talking to Ashley. You never <laughs> were clear about I what you needed. I asked you on the show, literally. The listeners well, can attest. if you're serious, okay. it's called a private text. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I recently posted this. I'm just going to post. I'm just going to read it. People are so used to indirect, fluffy, coddling speech that being spoken to directly and neutrally like an adult feels like an assault. <laughs> Damn, Chelsea. No, no, no. I'm like just saying adult. that. <clears throat> so, and and I've I've experienced that. Like, I will tr- I will like have the most neutral tone, say nothing like about how I'm feeling or nothing about like attacking. Just like say like facts. And like someone could like perceive that incorrectly. And I think that that's a problem in our current society, in my opinion. I think I should be able to just say something and it just be the thing. But 
I, I really want you to write back and like give examples because I don't know if it's that because on the flip side, she could also just be being an asshole and be being a bitch, but is, I'm just like, not sure if it's that, or if she's just like a direct person and you need like coddly soft talk, mm-hmm. um, which, which maybe she can adjust to you. But also I think part of being a grown up is like, not everyone's going to coddle you, but yeah. I, I, I would like, um, I wish you, can you write back and like give examples of what exactly she's doing or saying that's like mean and you also said you understand the reason why she's like that and I wish I had some color on what the reason is like what was the reason yeah I need more information on this one it makes me think about this dude there's this guy I watch on TikTok who like imitates different friends and he'll be like the feeling when you're friends with the an empath in quotes or you're friends with the he had he has one where the person is kind of like harsh and the person will come in your house and be like it's a mess in here this place is crazy how do you live in this space like this mm, you look tore up or like just things like that like nitpicky that's but mean. yeah way. that's not so that's i don't mean. know if it's that's like not that correct. Yeah. yeah 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 i need examples yeah well let us know best of luck um if this person is an asshole they don't need to be your friend i'm just gonna Period. be honest with you like nobody has time for that so you know, hopefully yeah. this is if, something you can grow with. Yeah, I would agree with that. If like you don't feel good being around this person, then why do you care? Just stop talking to them then. It ain't that cut that bitch up. Oh, <laughs> I used to love that. Same. <laughs> hey, camp. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's another episode of Black Girls texting yeah follow us on instagram at black girls texting follow us on youtube at black girls texting follow us on twitter at black girls text one go to our website pop cops and merch at black girls texting.com email us at hello at black girls texting.com and don't forget to rate comment subscribe share 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 anything that we post on instagram it's so helpful when you share we are an independently black woman funded podcast thank you bye bye, bye.